Welcome to the 10th lecture in Abstract Algebra. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include inverses, units, zero divisors, and an introduction to groups. Okay, so in this lecture we're going to begin our study of group theory. Now a group is the most comprehensive magma that exists, or at least the most comprehensive magma that we currently recognize. But before we dive into groups, uh, there are some preliminary concepts that we need to understand. Uh, the first of which is that there are two broad categories of, uh, or classes of magmas, each with their own associated uh, conventions. The first is what we call an additive magma. And an additive magma consists of a set closed under a binary operation where that operation is some notion of addition. Now recall that an identity element depends upon the operation. It also depends upon the underlying set. But uh, given an underlying set, there is a different uh, identity element depending upon whether that uh, operation is additive or multiplicative. So in an additive magma, we tend to call the identity element the additive identity. And we tend to denote the additive identity with the symbol 0. Now let me emphasize that this is the symbol 0, not necessarily the number 0. Uh, for instance, if the underlying set is not a set of numbers, then the uh, additive identity is not the number zero. Another convention with an additive magma is that the operation is explicitly shown. So uh, for example, in the magma consisting of the uh, integers under uh, normal addition, for every pair of integers, we know that their sum is also an integer. But notice, uh, again, that we are explicitly showing the operation of addition between the two elements. As another example, in the set of integers modulo n under addition modulo n, we know that for each pair of integers modulo n, that their sum modulo n is also an integer modulo n, and again, uh, we show the uh, operation explicitly between the two uh, elements A and B. The other class is uh, the class of multiplicative magmas. And a multiplicative magma consists of a set S closed under a binary operation where that operation is some notion of multiplication. And uh, for a multiplicative magma, we tend to call the identity element the multiplicative identity. And we tend to denote it with the symbol 1, which we call unity. Now, uh, a convention in a multiplicative magma is that the operation is not always explicitly shown. So for example, in the uh, magma consisting of the integers under normal arithmetic uh, multiplication for every pair of integers, their product is also an integer. As another example, in the set consisting of ordered triples together with the operation that we call the cross product, for every pair of ordered triples in three-dimensional real space, uh, we can consider those elements, those ordered triples, as vectors in three-dimensional real space, so we're considering uh, a coordinate space. The product of those two ordered triples is the cross product of the two vectors 
which is once again a vector in three-dimensional real space. Now uh, the operation that we call a cross product is uh, explicitly or specifically defined only for a three-dimensional space, three-dimensional three vector space. Uh, we will later look at other notions of multiplication between vectors that produces another vector. Okay, so now we'll uh, move on with a new definition. Let the set S be a subset of a larger set T and let the structure consisting of the set S together with a binary operation star be a magma. The inverse of an element A in the set S is the element which we denote A inverse in the set T such that when we perform the operation star in whichever order between the element A and its inverse, we obtain the identity element. Now uh, notice that the uh, inverse for a given element in the set S may or may not be contained in the set S. So new definition. Let the structure consisting of the set S together with a binary operation star be a multiplicative magma An element U in the set S is a unit if it has a multiplicative inverse which is also in the underlying set S. So let's look at an example in the uh, magma consisting of the integers modulo 3 together with multiplication modulo 3 the numbers 1 and 2 are units since the product 1 times 1 gives 1 which is the multiplicative uh, identity for the uh, operation of multiplication modulo 3 over the integers modulo 3 and so the number 1 is its own uh, multiplicative inverse. The same is true of the number 2. 2 times 2 modulo 3 gives 1 and so the numbers 1 and 2 are both units in the structure consisting of the integers modulo 3 under multiplication modulo 3. Okay, so a new definition. Once again, let the structure consisting of the set S closed under the binary operation star be a multiplicative magma. If the elements A and B in the set S are non-zero elements, such that the product is zero. Now, uh, if the underlying set is not a set of numbers, then more generally we mean that the product gives the additive identity. So if uh, the product of two non-zero elements gives the additive identity, then the uh, two elements, A and B, are called zero divisors. So as an example, in the structure consisting of the integers modulo 4 
under multiplication, modulo 4. The number 2 is a zero divisor. Since the product, 2 times 2, modulo 4, gives the additive identity, which is the number 0. All right? So next we prove a lemma. Let a and b be integers. Then the product a times b is 0 if and only if either the number a is 0 or the integer b is 0. So proof. Let the product of a and b be 0, and suppose that the integer a is not 0. Then the integer b is a solution of the equation a times x equals 0, where we can restrict the indeterminate x to be in the set of rational numbers. Now, for every non-zero rational number, there exists a multiplicative inverse, namely 1 over a, such that a times 1 over a is the same as 1 over a times a, which gives the multiplicative identity 1. So as the number a is non-zero and an integer, and the integers is a subset of the set of rational numbers, there exists an inverse for that element a in the set of rational numbers such that a inverse times a times x is a inverse times 0. We can regroup the terms so that we have a inverse times a times x, and this gives 0 on the right hand side because 0 times any number always gives 0. Since uh, the product of a inverse with uh, the element a gives the multiplicative identity 1, we have 1 times x is 0, or more simply x is 0. So the solution set for the equation ax equals 0 is the set which contains 0. And as the uh, integer b is a solution of that equation, we must have that the integer b is 0. And similarly, If the product of a and b is 0 and b is not 0, then this implies that the integer a is 0. And so if the product of two integers, a and b, is 0, then either the integer a is 0 or the integer b is 0. Conversely, Suppose that either a is 0 or b is 0, then the product a times b is 0 in either case. And so we have that the product of two integers a and b is 0 if and only if at least one of the integers is 0. So as a corollary, we will prove that the integers under normal multiplication has no zero divisors. It's proof. Let a and b be integers. 
Then by the previous uh, lemma, the product a times b is zero if and only if at least one of the integers is zero. So by the contrapositive, we have that the product of a and b is not zero if and only if a is not zero and b is not zero. Now one of the implications in this biconditional is that if the integers a and b are non-zero, then the uh, their product is non-zero. And so uh, the uh, magma consisting of the integers under multiplication has no zero divisors. Now it's important to know whether or not a given structure has uh, zero divisors because this affects how we solve uh, polynomial equations uh, where the uh, polynomial uh, exists in that structure. Uh, so let the quadratic x squared minus 1 equal 0 where the variable or what we shall now call the indeterminate x is an integer. Then we can factor the quadratic into uh, linear terms x minus 1, x plus 1. So notice that we have two factors whose product is 0. Now as the uh, integers under normal multiplication does not have any 0 divisors, from the fact that two factors equal, the product of two factors equals 0, we can conclude that at least one of those factors must be 0. And so now we can solve each uh, linear equation. And we find that the solution set is negative 1 and 1. So let's now look at the same quadratic where this time the indeterminate x is in the set of integers modulo 4. Once again, we can factor the quadratic into linear terms. But as the set of integers modulo 4 under multiplication modulo 4 has a zero divisor, namely the number 2, we cannot conclude immediately that the product of two factors, that if the product of two factors equals zero, then at least one of them must be zero. And so we apply a different method. Let p of x uh, equal this product. Then p of zero gives 3 times 1, since uh, 0 minus 1 modulo 4 is the number 3. And this is 3, which is not 0. p of 1 gives 0 times 2, which is 0. p of 2 gives 1 times 2. 3, which is 3 and not 0. And finally, p of 3 gives 2 times 3 plus 1 modulo 4, which is 0, and this is 0. And so the solution set is 1 and 2. Okay?